In this video segment, we'll discuss the types of problems where Intersource can help. We'll do this by presenting a hypothetical yet believable collaboration scenario. We'll examine common approaches that teams take to this type of situation, both the advantages and the drawbacks of each approach. This conversation will help us to draw conclusions and lessons about Intersource. Well, imagine two teams with one producing software that is consumed by another. Right, to make it concrete, imagine a team producing an API service that a team producing a user experience consumes. At times, to deliver desired features, the experience may need to make a request for new functionality from the API. Oftentimes, the API will be able to deliver this requested functionality, no problem. However, depending on schedules or other prioritizing constraints, there may be times when that new functionality can't be delivered right away. In this scenario, the experience has a few options they might take. The first, we'll call wait it out. With this approach, the experience does nothing and simply waits, hoping that the API will be eventually be able to fill their feature request. Now, the advantage is that it probably requires the least amount of extra work on the part of the experience. There's a clear drawback, though, in that the experience doesn't get their desired functionality, at least not right away. And depending on future prioritization on the part of the API, that feature may not be delivered at all. Another approach we'll call workaround. With this approach, the experience may do some extra work to compensate for the lack of the requested functionality. This may be extra work in their own project, or they may start up a new project that gives them the functionality they were looking for via some other means. The benefit here is that the experience can get what they want, when they want it, and by their own effort only, no dependency on another team. There's some real drawbacks, though. The experience has inadvertently signed up for the long-term burden of maintenance of this new code. It's code that oftentimes is not in the domain of their core team competency. In addition, other teams at the company that have the same problem are unable to use this specialized one-off solution. And the company as a whole has acquired duplicate code and projects in the same problem area that are being worked on in an uncoordinated manner. Another approach we'll call Escalate. With Escalate, the experience doesn't take no for an answer, but attempts to influence the API to reconsider and prioritize their requested functionality. Oftentimes, this appeal is made to somebody in the management hierarchy of the API. It's common for the request to come from someone in the management hierarchy of the experience. It's get the bosses together, have them talk it out. The potential advantage is that the experience can get what it wants, when it wants it, without needing to maintain the new code long term. There are several disadvantages. In practice, the process of escalation tends to have high friction and take a large amount of time. And this time is spent by competent engineers and engineering leaders whose time is directed toward the non-productive non-engineering task of escalation. Okay. This process is so time intensive that it doesn't scale. A team that attempts to continually advocate for what it needs via escalation will simply run out of the time and social credibility that it needs to do so. Well, this conversation teaches us about Intersource, and that Intersource is meant to apply to the same type of collaborative situation where a team producing software is unable to deliver functionality that a team that's consuming it needs. What Intersource does is provide a way for the consuming team to get the benefits of weighted out, work around, and escalate without those associated drawbacks.